So people, I welcome you to another great episode. You are watching the quest of uh, Kabula. We are still in the UK. So now we have one of our beautiful, well-endowed sister is with us here. He's going to tell us a bit about everything that happens here. We are actually in the Oxford Old Castle. Is this yeah, the Oxford old? Castle and Prison. Uh, so originally a castle. Later Oxford on. Castle and Prison. A whole no more. And the medical culture said we have about 560 places, um, 560 places uh, in UK that needs to be visited. But we are visiting the ones that has connection with us. There will be B.E.A. Womunti. I have Oxford Castle. And also, say, say, prisons. I had a nipper be brave, a woo, a wahano munti, baby, a meko be a no me person, what do I do in DHA? Now, who we'll connected with your ancestors? I am the voice of your ancestors, and I project everything humanity and everything universe. Let's love, love, and let's hate, hate. I welcome you to another great episode. So, let's go to our sister. She will introduce herself and tell us where we are. Hello, my name is Emily. Uh, I'm a tour guide here at Oxford Castle in Prison. Today I'm actually depicting a 1700s inmate. So in the 1700s, actually you would be treated very differently whether you were poor or wealthy. And I am a wealthy prisoner, so I got whatever I wanted while I was here. Now, we're going to go a bit back, back, further back in time to start out with, which is this tower. Now, a lot of people don't realise this tower is even in Oxford, actually. This tower is one of the oldest buildings in Oxford. This was built over a thousand years ago in 1009 by the Anglo-Saxons. In fact, it was built to defend this city against invaders. And it did a great job at doing so, but in 1066, that did all change. Now, if you have a look around here, you can see that these walls here were, are absolutely enormous. Actually, they're nine feet or three metres wide. And so when the Normans invaded in 1066, they found this tower, they realised how defensive it was and decided to make it part of their new Norman castle in Oxford. And in fact, we can actually go up there later, we can go see the mound and we'll explore that. That's where the old castle is. But there's really no wonder why they chose this tower specifically to be a part of these defences. It's 26 metres in height and then nine feet at the thickest point down here. So very, very good at keeping people out, as you can tell. Okay, so I would say it was a hiding place for them, yeah. or a refuge for yes. them. Yes, yeah. Okay, so why do we have these metals there? Ah, so these sections would have been used when it was a prison. So as we transferred, actually, later on, after it was a castle, we started to use this place as a prison in 1216. Actually, the first prisoners we ever kept here were the drunk students of Oxford. I know. <laughs> But they were a bit different to what they are today. So today, most of the students, they're in their 20s. But in 1216, they were all 12 years old. And they all carried swords. And you can probably imagine a bunch of drunk 12-year-olds running around with swords. It wasn't very safe. Uh, so they used to lock them up in the dungeons below. In fact, this would have been a part of the old restraints used for the capstan wheel here. The capstan wheel is a bit further in time. In the 1800s, that's when we used hard labour here in the prison, which is seen across the world as well. Everyone, every, nearly every prison has had some kind of form of hard labour or hard work that they force the prisoners to do. And we have an example of that just on the floorboards over here. In fact, if you like, we can step over. We don't usually let the guests come over this way, but maybe it will help you feel some spirits if you stand on this section of the flooring. Now... This is the only, part, only surviving example of a capstan wheel in England. So the capstan wheel, it was originally used on a ship to raise an anchor. So the capstan wheel that was built here could have originally been used on a ship, would have been, which been, would have been used to sail the Pacific at the time. You see this section in the middle of this square, mm -hmm. that's where the post would stand. And then there would be eight poles sticking off all the way around. And 16 men, two by two, would be chained to these poles and forced to push this wheel around for eight to 12 hours a day. Really back <gasps> absolutely horrific. Uh, that's what those grooves are from on the floor. Those grooves are from the feet of the prisoners slowly wearing down a solid oak wood floor really really quite dark that, what was that thing that, so these that sections window? would have been ventilations and these would have actually these go all the way down to the dungeons below oh, okay now the dungeons themselves weren't used in the 1800s but that's where we kept prisoners uh in the 1200s specifically so all of the building this tower connects in some way even if certain parts were only used in different time periods that's why when people stand in this tower they tend to experience a range of different emotions as they walk through it because it's literally like they are walking so through who, time who were the people um 
in charge of this place at that time. During the 1800s, mm -hmm. we had multiple prison, prison governors come through. In fact, in 1795, we had a very specific prisoner called Daniel Harris. Now, he actually discovered sections of the site that were current, then buried under rubble and built the main prison on that side. And he also discovered this tower and started to preserve it. Now, as we climb up, we're going to go to the very top of the tower today. And as we do, I'll show you sections that Daniel Harris actually repaired. Okay. Keep watching, the journey continues. <laughs> As I said before, this tower was built for defence, um, so it's quite tall, uh, 101 steps tall to be exact. Um, I know I'm going to make you walk up 101 it's steps fine. today. It's fine. We'll take a break quick in one of the rooms so I can show you the old tanks that connected to the capstan wheel, because that wheel was used to pump water to the top. Uh, so if you want, we can bring in the climb now. Yes. Follow me this way. Okay. Power clear to Matilda's. Heading to Matilda's now. Boom. There you go. Wow. Very narrow. It's very, very narrow. And you might also notice that the steps themselves yeah. are all different heights. Yes. That's because these are known as Norman trip steps. Whoa. Really, really nasty. They're all different heights so that they make you trip and hopefully stop any invaders coming up the tower. <sighs> there we go. I'm so just getting to understand something. Yeah. When you want security, yes, as a free man, yes, you need to have a strong um, protection. Yes, and when you are in prison, as a captive, they still need this strong security for exactly. you. Exactly. That's why in nearly every single prison, then they still had churches. They still prayed to a god. Because really, when they were sitting there and they were waiting all that time, that's all they had. That's all they had. All they had was their faith. And all they had was themselves and their inner strength. And you can imagine having to walk up and down these towers as mm. well as a prisoner. Mm. And we're going to head into this room. And do tell me how you feel as you walk into here. Because this room itself is quite dark. has quite a dark history. Ooh. Now the doorways are very low in here as well. Wow. So as someone that's worked here for half a decade... Mm -hmm. This is one of the rooms I don't like being in by myself. <laughs> Why? It's, Why? It's quite strange. Now, the history that we have in this room, of course, above our heads, those are the tanks that connected to the capstan wheel. Mm -hmm. But this room itself was at one point the centre of a war, the centre of a lot of conflict and hate. Um, that was a war in the mid-1600s, over 400 years ago, between the ro royalists and parliamentarians. Now, that was when King Charles I actually rejected Parliament and came to Oxford. And when he did, he actually turned this place into a prisoner of war camp. Now, obviously, while we're stood in this room, there's not a lot of space. Uh, even with us four living in here, we'd probably start ripping each other's hair out. Mm -hmm. But there would be 60 men in this room at a time. 60? 60. 6-0? Six 6-0. Zero. Six zero. So there was no room to lay against the floor. If in fact, you would actually sleep leaning up against the wall with the next man lying on you so you didn't slump to the ground. It was horrific. There were accounts of the waste being over people's shoes. And so the conditions in here were horrible. And that's why I really don't like being in here because I, I can feel that energy. I can feel how horrible yes. it must have been to be yes. in here. The only light ever coming through that window just there. Wow. Um... Let me ask this. It's funny, but I will still ask you. So, all these stories about this castle or this prison, do we have um, anything that relates? Do we have any blacks that were in this place? What well, I want to know Absolutely. more about. Absolutely. So, during the Victorian era, something that used to happen a lot towards immigrants that came to Oxford and England as a whole was they constantly be prejudiced against. Basically, being an immigrant or being a minority was a crime. If you were brought into this city and you didn't look like everyone else, you would be prosecuted. And it was the same for people of lower income as well. And usually, you'd be punished far more harshly. Now, obviously, I said earlier that I am dressed as a 1700s prisoner. In the 1700s, if you were a minority in England and you'd come over, no one cared for you. You would struggle to get a job because you were trying to learn English for the first time. And most of the time, you would have to commit crime to survive. There was no other way about it. And so 
Even if that person committed the same crime as a wealthy white person, they would be punished far more, far worse, far, far worse, especially when it came to places like Debtor's Tower, which we will explore later. Because in the 1700s, if you couldn't afford to pay for your cell in the main prison, after your sentence, you'd be taken to Debtor's Tower and you'd have to start working off your debt. And if you didn't have amassed wealth or family on the outside, then you would be stuck in debtors for years. In fact, we had a man who was an immigrant from Europe who stayed here for over 30 years just trying to work off his debt. Now, he was from Northern Europe. He was from the Middle East. He really, really did struggle while he was here. It was absolutely horrible. And you can imagine, even just being in this room, this room in the Civil War would have mostly held white men, but also at the same time, we have seen slavery on this site over years. In fact, if you look out of this window here, that mound there, as much as people from black heritage were not made slaves to that mound, actually the Anglo-Saxons were. That mound was built by 200 Saxon slaves. Now, when we go to the top, I'll talk to you a bit more about that. But once the Normans invaded England, they actually forced the local people to work for them, completely against their own will. And that's how that mound was built. That's why we cordon it off and we ask people to pay a price to go up there, because it's about creating, preserving that history and preserving the work that those men put in. Why is it that everything prison is painful? Why? It, it always is. It's because back then they didn't understand that the human brain needs nurturing, it needs care. Like you said, love is love, love and hate, hate. It's one of those things where they believed that the only reciprocation to hurt and pain was hurt and pain and that's how you punish people. Nowadays, I think hopefully most people believe in nurturing people. If they've done something wrong, they need help. They don't need to be punished and we're getting better. We call that, <laughs> we call that consciousness. Exactly, exactly. You are watching the quest. Um, I think I'm a bit emotional. I don't actually get emotional easily. So when you see me emotional, it means energy is being around, that is, I mean, hovering around the air. You could feel the vibrations. I feel people don't die. I, I can still see people here. Exactly, yeah. But they, I, they always say, the saying is, that I heard when I was growing up, if walls could talk, and I feel like if these walls could talk, they wouldn't stop. They'd keep going because there is so much history here. And I fully believe in imprinted energies, especially on places like this. Like I said, this tower is over a thousand years old. The souls that have passed through here, alive or dead, there's no way they aren't still here. There's no way there isn't something still here. Yes. I will say, uh, those who can translate the English, the comment section, you should take over. Right, 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 right. My English is four. Her English is 3,000. So before he said 1,000, I have said just two. So translate in the comment section. Right, 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 right. She's doing awesome. So we are in the Oxford Castle or prisons. Yeah. Uh, ah, 1,000 years and over, right? Yeah, over 1,000 uh, years of uh, building. So right now, it's just a tourist attraction. You don't do anything here. Nothing no. goes on here. No, no. We have this section of the prison is a tourist attraction. Next door, we have the Malmaison Hotel, which is a, a prison turned into a hotel. Now, there's a big thing going on through England and Europe at the moment uh, where it's a sensationalization of prisons and the prison system. What we try to do here is not just sensationalize the history, but inform people. So in the hotel, you can go stay in a prison south of the night, the night and not think about the history that was here. Whereas when you come to Oxford Castle, you do truly see and feel and hear about the energies that were here. And it's quite interesting to be able to walk back and walk through time. Now, in a minute, we can go upstairs. We'll get some fresh air, get out of these energies. Okay. Uh, and we'll go upstairs and we'll enjoy the sights. Because as much as this tower has seen a lot of terrible things, from this tower, you can see a gorgeous 10-mile view of Oxford. Mm -hmm. And it's quite nice to have that refresher. Exactly. To realise that, at least today, it's not as bad as it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> mm, now, this is beautiful. Keep watching. The journey continues. Um, this is... Um, um, I don't know if I should use the word sad. It's not sad they died for us. We appreciate them. Now we are acknowledging it's, them. It's emotional. Yeah. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Hey, Abusia, she's a staircase. <laughs> she steps. Now, actually, internationally, people use defense tactics like we have here. For example, mm -hmm. the staircase spiraling mm -hmm. to disorient people. The steps being different sizes. We see this across the world. In fact, I had a man that came here from Afghanistan who said that in his village back home, mm -hmm. he had similar defensive towers outside of his village that yes. had the same tactics. Bear in mm -hmm. mind that tower was built before Afghanistan had any contact with us as England. So this is another prison. Yeah, similar. It was a defensive tower in his village. So it was are you quite taking the windows and the doors, the size of the doors? 
<sighs> so as you said, it's emotional being here. And when I come up here, it reminds me what this history was for. Mm -hmm. You can see the entire city of Oxford. Wow. So what was happening here? So obviously we have the university. Uh, the university itself was actually established in the 1100s, so 900 years ago. Mm -hmm. So of the oldest points of education in England and in Europe. In fact, it was one of the first universities, speaking on black culture in England, to actually to begin to one of the first prestigious universities. We have Cambridge and we have uh, Oxford. Oxford was the first university to welcome minorities into its program. Uh, and, and that's one thing that we've always struggled with in Oxford, is because we're a trading town, and we always have been, we've had so many different cultures come through here. In fact, just across that way, if you, uh, if you will continue through the city centre, you'll find Cowley Road, which is a, an amazing hub of ethnicities and different cultures coming together. That's where I actually grew up. So we grew up around uh, Jamaican barbecues out the front on the side of the street. We grew up around, um, you had uh, Albanian uh, cafes with gorgeous frothy coffees and things like that. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you smell the coffee beans from down the street. We have such a rich history now in Oxford. And it's hard to look back and see that even in just London, not too long away, not too far away, how even in recent history that we've struggled with a racial divide. And that's why I love Oxford as a city. As I've grown up here, the culture that I've been surrounded with is so mixed. It's so everyone's involved in each other. There's no separation. And it's quite nice to be able to see different cultures. Whereas previously in Oxford, we were so isolated, we're so landlocked. If you go back to the 1100s, the moment that anyone saw anyone that looked different, like I said, in the 1700s, you were treated as a lower class citizen. And luckily in Oxford, it's not like that today. Everyone is equal. And it's quite nice to be able to look up here and see how far we've come as a city, even with just the landscape itself, but also culturally and socially. Okay, so this very place we are standing, I could see they've lifted it up, like you said, it's a tower that you stand and see everywhere. What exactly were they doing here? Why so, is this place here? So the watchtower itself, this would have been uh, a lot more, when it was originally built, it would have been completely wood. This is where you'd have guards stationed around the city of Oxford to defend it from invaders, like for example the Vikings. They were constantly pillaging and destroying areas. Now a lot of people confuse Vikings with a race of people. Uh, a Viking was actually a job description. Uh, the, a Viking was to invade and so when we regularly were invaded eventually we built these towers and we built these walls to protect ourselves and protect our community um, in fact we've only got one other tower that's alike this today which is over that way uh, you can't really see it from here, it's a lot smaller than this tower mm -hmm. uh, but it used to wrap all the way around the city of Oxford and actually up here you would have guards stationed Throughout all of the seasons, winter, in the freezing cold, they'd be stood up here. The only thing that would keep them warm was a bonfire. And if it started raining, there was no roof. Mm. So it would immediately go out and they'd be stuck up here in the cold and the snow. And they would be stationed here and they would fight for them. They would fight for their city. If any attacks came, these would be the first responders. They would be the front lines. And so you can imagine the fear that they would feel, but also the pride they'd feel in being able to protect the people they love. Um, it's quite a beautiful sight from up here. Obviously, today it's gorgeous for filming and for Instagram, but previously it would have been great for seeing an army coming from miles away over the hills of Oxford. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can still see into the countryside of Oxford to this day. Luckily, the, the, uh, the skyline hasn't been quite blocked by the modern infrastructure. Hmm. This is a wonderful story. Um, um, so let me ask, you were telling me something these prisoners built. Yes. And you said when we come here, we are able to have a look at it. Yeah, what, what we can do that? now is we can head down to the base of the prison. Okay. And then what we can do is we can explore the old deeming of the prison, which is still a part of our site today. Actually, we also have a Norman crypt I can show you, which used to be a part of the chapel, a place of worship. Okay. But actually down there, they say it's one of the most haunted places in all of Oxford. Now, mm -hmm. we can go down there, but once again, a lot of people that go down there can feel quite uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, in fact, surrounding our site, I don't know whether you've been told yet, this entire area is a graveyard. The entire space you've been walking over today is in fact a graveyard. It's hundreds of bodies, mostly from the pestilence, and surrounding our old Norman chapel and Norman church uh, is actually a graveyard to this day. And when we go down to the crypt, just beyond the walls, there are bodies. Uh, so it's a place of like respect and worship. And we like okay, to there. so, so let's, let's, redo, let's bring the conversation a bit lower yep. or a bit down you said today you were dressed like an inmate yes yeah 1700s prisoner yes may we know why her 
why do you choose to dress like her? Because well, there were others. Any 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 special story about that? Image? Well, when it comes to the 1700s, there was a major divide in Oxford and a major divide across England between how the poor were treated and how the wealthy were treated. Now, being brought up, I came from a lower income family. I came from a family that was a part of welfare and part of benefits. Um, and so to be able to put this on and depict what a wealthy person would have been, it's freeing in a way. It, it takes me away from what my background was and it shows that luckily now people who were in my position aren't treated the way that they were then. So obviously I'm a wealthy prisoner, I got whatever I wanted, I could pay for whatever I wanted. Um, at the same time though, the law did hopefully abide by each person. In fact, we had a wealthy woman here who was incarcerated for killing her father with poison from the same era that I'm dressed in and she was hanged here, in fact, public hanging just by the mound outside. Now I can show you guys actually, we can go down to the prison and you can see a cell which would have been from my time period where I would have stayed and we can also show you uh, a, a cell where um, a person of lower income would have stayed. Now there's also obviously a lot more of the prison. Um, you are watching the quest, I think he's, <laughs> she's explained almost everything. You can help in writing what you think you've heard in the comment section for those who cannot, those who are like me, to also <laughs> understand. But this one i want to know is there any black who has made a significant something here that when you are mentioning like hundred first people can we get one black person who did something or create something actually in this castle yeah we can go down to the prison actually and i'll show you in the exhibition some more of the history there um because there's actual pictures of some of the inmates oh. especially from the late 1800s and 1900s wow. so okay. we'll head down there now so the journey continues so when baby are you what you were oxford castle ah a bed than prison in fact, baby, I just know you know who cloning in a history. No, no, or he's she's giving us all the all we need to know. Keep watching the journey continues. Yeah, because she see, baby, who be be ni be and so be and fast one in here. Of course, when you come 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 ni atun tum atun tum. Of course, so baby, ah, any who cloning up. But they've made something out of it. Now the other so teh ho. Still, I will bring me close for the ah. Any na mi ni. I'm connecting. Yeah, you know, to yen and anum and unti any of the baby bini baby and I was no one born. A hana no more framma. Aha, then from a fa a de bama nipa. Baby and now una nano moda. We still have cross here. I didn't ask her. It's a real shame with a lot of our history at the castle because obviously in the 1700s a lot of prisoners, especially immigrants, their names would be scrubbed from history. They would be imprisoned here and no one would know their names. However, we do know how they were, how they were held here and it wasn't very nice. I'm actually going to walk through now and I'll show you a cell where a lot of immigrants, especially black immigrants, would have been placed and it's really quite horrific how they were treated during that time. Mm, mm. So. One thing about punishments for a lot of people, especially those of lower class, it was about humiliation, public humiliation. And one of those stories actually starts here. So this here is something we call the pillory. And there were plenty of immigrants throughout English history that were kept in pillories like this. Now, once again, sadly, a lot of their names have been erased. We're still trying to dig into that history here in Oxford. But plenty of times people would be placed into these pillories and stocks, as you saw out front, in front of the castle today, and they would be punished. Now, today, this is a fun uh, photo shoot for people to do. But previously, this would have been a point of humiliation for people. It was really, really quite horrible, really nasty punishment. They'd have their wrists placed into either side and then their head through the middle. And then there would be things thrown at them all day, every single day. Really quite horrific. Um, and, and black people went through that. Yeah, as well. yeah, especially immigrants. At the end of the day, when it came to people, especially the black people that immigrated to England, um, they would have been humiliated just for being black. And it was about trying to erase their history and erase their name. Uh, luckily today, we don't use systems like this at all in England. We don't use public humiliation as punishment, as you said. Like, it's not, this isn't sort of a way to heal someone and build them back up once they've committed a crime or honestly most of the time not even committed a crime at all but we'll go now and we'll actually have a look at a cell where someone would have stayed so this is likely what a cell would have been 
for someone who was of lower income, especially immigrants, especially black people. Um, now, this looks like not too bad for one person. Bear in mind, there could be up to seven people in this room sleeping in here for any amount of time until they made it to court. Uh, this was during a time where prison wasn't a place to punish you. It was just a place to keep you before your court date. Of course, for a lot of people, that was fine. But for people who couldn't afford to pay any more, who couldn't afford a nicer cell, this is where you would stay with as many people as they could shove in here with you. The journey continues, keep watching. So, <laughs> this is prison D210. Yes. So, so, this area was the D wing of the prison. We had four different wings. So, we had the D wing, we had A, B, and C. C wing was the women and children wing. In fact, we had children as young as seven here in the 1800s. Actually, our youngest prisoner was a young lady called Julia. Um, and she was seven years old when she was incarcerated here for stealing a baby pushchair, a baby pram. It was empty, there was no baby in there, she just wanted to play with it. Um, but because she'd stolen it, she was incarcerated here for seven days and put to hard labour. This is what a wealthy cell would look like if you were interested as well. That is where someone who is rich would stay. For example, that is where I would stay if I was in the 1700s. <laughs> Not really, I don't have that much money. <laughs> Oh, okay. They would have the uh, wardrobes. Much nicer in here, as you can tell. Now the Bible is always part of this. Exactly. Religion is always big in prisons, even between the wealthy and the poor, uh, black or white. That was the only thing you had while you were incarcerated was faith. You would pray. You'd sit there and you'd pray and you'd pray and you'd pray. And we still use this in prisons today as well. Every prison in England and usually across the world has a church, has a place of worship, regardless of what you believe in, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're, whether you're Christian, Catholic or Protestant, whatever you believe in. Who is this Mary? So Mary Blandy, she was a very rich woman. This was the lady I said had killed her father. Now apparently it was by accident. She was tricked by a man who gave her poison and said it was a love potion. And she gave it to her father to make him want her and this man to be together. Now Mary wanted to marry this man. Her dad didn't want her to because he already had a wife and kids mm -hmm. in Scotland. So he was cheating on his wife with Mary and Mary's father didn't like this. And so he forbade the relationship. He didn't want it to happen. Um, but then Mary accidentally gave her father poison instead of the love potion. It killed him and she was hanged here. Mm. Now she was a very wealthy woman so while she stayed here she was quite comfortable. She never stayed in the prison. She stayed in the governor's house. He was a man who ran the prison. So she was quite comfortable. But they still hanged her though. She still hanged her. So even in history, even if you were able to live nicely while you were incarcerated, you were still punished. You couldn't escape the law. The law. <laughs> so at least there, everyone was treated mm. equally. <laughs> now, something quite lucky about the Victorian era, the 1800s, as much as there was a divide between those who were of lower income, for example, immigrants, for example, black people, <laughs> and the wealthier people, in the 1800s, no, everyone was treated equally. You were all given the same, no matter your creed, no matter the color of your skin. You were given the same for free. You no longer had to pay for prison. Uh, so you were given food every single day. Oftentimes it would be boiled meat and potatoes. Um, and you would also be given a room. This is in fact a room from the Victorian era. This is what exactly what it would have looked like, the same size. They would have used a steel bed. That is a genuine steel bed in there as well. Now this is what it would have looked like in the Victorian era, and that's a solid metal bed. And as I said, in the 1800s, a lot more black people were incarcerated because they were all emigrating over. Oftentimes this was literally during slavery. And so if someone was actually able to escape slavery, which did happen quite often, especially in Oxford, because there was multiple opportunities for work and trade and agriculture, if they were incarcerated, they would be brought here. This is the kind of cell they would stay in and they would also be expected to do something like hard labour. Hmm. <laughs> people. People, and mama, you So, we, we keep going, because I can hear you, I can feel your time is up, <laughs> so I don't want to ask lots of questions. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, ask as many questions as you like. Mm-hmm. This should be a major prison. 
So I mentioned earlier our youngest prisoner. This is our youngest prisoner. Her family was of Spanish descent, um, and she was incarcerated here when she was seven. But now when you go to court, there are cases they will find you. You pay and yeah. you are free. Some you will sign a bond not to do again. That time they were not having any... When, when you go wrong, you, that it ends you in prison and you are punished. Mm, pretty much every time, unless you were rich, usually a rich white person, and then you could pay off the judge and you'd get out of prison. So yeah. bribe didn't start yesterday. Literally, exactly. Bribery has been around for a long time. In fact, the reason why Julia had seven days instead of the three months the judge wanted to originally give her is because her father paid the judge and had it whittled down to seven days because he didn't want the family to look bad. Now, Julia, after this, actually left prison. But while she was here, she would have been expected to do something called oakum picking, which you may have heard of. It's something that's been regularly used for punishment throughout history. And it's where you have to take a rope and then peel the fibres apart piece by piece by piece. The problem is with this punishment is it leaves your hands and your fingers blistered and cut to the bone. And this is something, actually, that was regularly used within slavery with black people over years and years. The Navy would force them to work on boats while they were travelling across the world and pull apart rope and sit there pulling apart this rope that would then be remade into rope or used into bedding. Really quite horrible. So even throughout history, these punishments were reused in cultures over and over and over again, over hundreds of years.